This week on Crossfeed. Giant Jesus in Poland. Prostitution classes. Can churches discriminate? The Taliban hostages. And why Jesus at Walmart? Welcome, everybody, then, to this week's slightly late edition of Crossbeat News. I am the Reverend Dr. James Butler. I serve as pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Welcome, everyone. It is good to see you again this week, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. Busy. Catching my breath. But we're selling food to racers. Uh, go kart races all week, and also big news in Iowa right now is Rag Ride just had done the uh, bicycle race across the state. So, or no, it's not really a race, it's a ride. Um, but they came practically through our backyard. Oh, about, really? Yeah, about fifteen thousand um, bikes plus support vehicles and stuff like that. How you get so big to do food of this kind? It's a pretty big deal. We didn't try serving food to that many people. That's a good it's, idea. It's, well, it's it's been done in the past. It was a big fundraiser um, mm-hmm. like 20 years ago. But um, we were already busy with this other thing. And we said, eh, let's not stretch ourselves too thin here. Oh, why not? Stretching yourself is thin. That's what it's all about in ministry, isn't it? You know, trying to accomplish more things than you can at once. So, but I, um, I'm glad to do it. Actually, this was... That's just a hectic week. I mean, I see like I'm bouncing all over the place, you know, just one thing after another. And uh, then on Friday, there was a um, massive, you know, there was a, a, a car accident um, not too far from here. Uh, a sewer grate flipped up when a truck went over it and went through the windshield of the car behind it. So they had to weld all these sewer grates. So four lanes of traffic were shoved into one. Uh, it took me, that's usually a 15, 20 minute drive up here to the church, it took me an hour and five minutes, and that's because I went on the back roads. Uh, there are some people on that road almost all day. At one time, the back was 13 miles long. I mean, it was just, just a huge mess. And uh, So that was our excitement on Friday. Friday. The accident was at 5.30 in the morning at 7 o'clock p.m. They finally opened the entire highway. So on... Um, wow. Friday, I I quit working about three o'clock and went on home. Just to, took the back road so I could miss all that traffic, but it was a mess. Took my wife. My wife only works like three or four miles from the house, and it took her a half hour to get home because now it's going the back roads because they were just everything was jammed. So, and then this morning I was driving up here to the same construction zone where that accident took place and blew a tire. Oh man. So, uh, oh, done that. Like yep, rear tire blew, and um, couldn't get the spare down. So I finally had to have somebody tow me, uh, come call tow company, and they took me over to um, um, get a new tire. And uh, actually, all four tires were, were pretty much shot. So uh, I, I was planning on getting them replaced later this week, so I got to get them replaced today. So that was part of my fun and excitement. But I sat this down and... after. After church, I After went. church? Yep. Okay, not before. No, well, the, the, the tire blew before church, but I managed to get to, to the office. Fortunately, oh, it man. blew about, I don't know, a mile or two from here, so I went ahead and just slowed down to 30 and drove all the way in. So, <laughs> yep, not much left of that tire either. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> Fortunately, the rim was okay. Too. That was my worry. Well, I don't know where to begin. Let's begin in Afghanistan today. I couldn't get over news story this week. I couldn't get over the story. I mean, um, you know, I'd never, I hadn't heard about this a whole lot. I like said I've been kind of bouncing around doing other things this week, and um, with this group of uh, twenty or so uh, Korean South Korean church members were uh, arrested in Afghanistan. And what was really interesting to me, and the two stories that you put that, that, that are up here, 
is one of the guy, the Taliban spokesman says, we're in investigating who are they and what are they doing in Afghanistan. And after the investigation, the Taliban higher authorities will make a decision about their fate. And the other story, well, we just put a lie to that whole thing. They were being held hostage in order to be leveraged to get Taliban people out of uh, out of out of prison. And I thought, man, you know, what a bunch of. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Yep. Yeah, they've already uh, killed one of them, and I was I was just looking to add for updates, and uh, it looks like they've they've killed one of them, but there's not a whole a lot of progress. And it sounds like, if, if I got it, the information right, the person that they killed is the pastor. Mm. I got a bad feeling about this. Um, so, man, this is a mess. But, you know, the thing is, the, the thing that, that just struck me about this was, why'd you send a missionary group into Afghanistan? Hey, man, this don't feel right. It just doesn't seem like a wise thing. You know, no, I'm not saying that the, the the church or the missionary group are to blame for being held captive any more than a, a woman who dresses provocatively is is to be blamed for being raped. But at the same time, it's just not a really a good place to go right now to, um, you know, if you want to go in there on some kind of a mission trip. Um, it just, you know, I, I think there's other places you could go. Uh, that would be a little bit safer where there's still plenty of people that don't know Jesus. This sort of thing has cropped up before, and it has always been due to human error. And it's sad nonetheless. Right. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, that it said that, you know, one time there's like 1,200 South Koreans um, doing ministry there. Um, and you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. It seems to be a very dangerous place to go. But then, you know, maybe that's their their you know their vision. This is it's kind of Paul going to Jerusalem. You know, they kept saying, "Paul, don't go, man. This, this you know, this, you're going to get killed there." And Paul said, "I know. I know I'm going to be arrested. I know exactly what's going to happen. But I need to go there." Yeah. You know, and so it could be that this thing. It amazed me, this church, uh, the nine-year-old uh, Samuel, I just killed that, uh, Presbyterian church, uh, already has 3,800 members and 50, sponsors 50 missionaries around the world. Impressive. Yeah. And it's also interesting Indeed. to see that South Korea has the second highest number of missionaries that it sends out, other than the United States. So it's just amazing to me that how, you know, the Christianity is just caught on in South Korea and the, and the vision these people have. Although when I graduated my D-Men at uh, Gordon-Conwell, well, there's a lot of Korean students there. And I mean, these, man, when they, when they you knew the Koreans when one of them graduated, everybody applauded. Yeah. And it was a big, they had a huge contingent. Matter of fact, the pastor that confirmed me mm -hmm. um, was had been a teacher at the Lutheran Seminary in Korea. I did not know that. And in fact, had three adopted kids from there. Hmm. But you know how we wound up getting Lutheranism got started there. Oh, very nice, Ben. Yeah, I've read the book, but I don't yeah. really remember. It yeah, well, the, the, the prophet, our, Saint, our our seminary in St. Louis, Wong Young Ji. Um, was Presbyterian and came to do his PhD at St. Louis Seminary. He basically was the founder of, of Lutheranism in South Korea. Yeah, I had him for a professor. Amazing guy. A absolutely amazing guy, so long as you could deal with the accent. Yeah, he had a pretty thick accent. He had a very thick accent, uh, especially if you were unfortunate enough to get him right after he came back from South Korea because he'd go over there part of the time to teach. And stuff, and then he came back, and oh, it was real bad then. But amazing guy, very good theologian, uh, wonderful person. But you know, I just really do hurt for these people. I pray that God would protect them, that they'd be released. And you know, the hard thing is, how do you negotiate with people? 
who just soon kill you. Right. You know, how do you negotiate with people who will strap, you know, bombs to themselves and blow themselves up? I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I try to figure out how you're going to do this. You know, just, you know, I mean, sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. There's no reasoning. I guess the only thing I can say for the, the, the family is, and, and the people, uh, the hope, they have the hope of the resurrection. Exactly. I mean, I guess that's where you're looking at. What's the worst thing you can do? Kill me? What do I think? I think to kill it. Right. Yeah. Send me well, home. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, from that perspective, oh, well, you know, we're going to go to Afghanistan. Oh, you know, you can get killed. You say that like you get a bad thing. <laughs> that's know? right. You know, I mean... <laughs> Boy, you mean I'll be in heaven sooner? <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't think I would want to uh, go there. War's not like one great. <laughs> no, I don't think I would. I don't think they. I don't know if they'd be too much for a statue of Jesus in Afghanistan either. Uh, especially not one that big. All right. Um, uh, yeah, a town in Poland. Uh, oh man, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Starts with an S. Slubodsky? I guess that's right. Sounds um, good to me. <laughs> they're building a 31 meter, so it's 102 feet high, statue of Christ the King. Impressive. So it was originally planned to be 20 meters, but the new planned height will be one meter taller than the famous statue of Christ the Redeemer, that overlooks Rio de Janeiro. Most impressive. So they're one-upping them. And of course, the Rio de Janeiro is probably a little bit more of a vacation spot than Poland. Yeah, probably. Um, the cost of the statue is three million zloty, which I I converted that. <clears throat> it's uh, one million. 85,000 plus American dollars. And, um, or for our European listeners, it's 792,000 euros. So, first of all, I mean, okay, you know, great. Build a statue. I've got nothing against art and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have some beautiful artwork, um, beautiful stained glass windows and stuff in our church. It's really nice. Um, at the same time, I look at this and say, all right, first of all, what's with the one meter bigger than that other one? Is this really about glorifying Christ, or is this about competition, tourism? You know, what are we trying to accomplish here? And then you look at the cost of it. Wow. See, I look at that kind of stuff, and I say, you know, there's so many other things. You know, it's sort of like uh, um, <laughs> like Judas, uh, when the the um, nard was poured out on Jesus, and he goes, you know, we've got to use this money for the poor, and, you know, <laughs> so my motivations hopefully aren't the same as his. Yeah, but, of course, um, Judas, is mon- <laughs> Judas is sitting back going, yeah, we're really going to come into my pocket, you know, I mean, that was, that was his thought, so uh, he was pilfering. Yeah, but, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that. Obviously, I don't have anything to do with the Church of Poland anyway, but, um, you know, I'm just I'm looking at this and going, there's other things that you could do with that money. Yeah, but think, if you put the statue up there and you get the tourist, then you can sell sell little miniatures of the statue. <laughs> so, you know, you know, it's a you gift that keeps back. on giving. Make your money back that way. <laughs> but I think this is the... But, you know, you think about it. This is Poland. You know, this is the town... You know, the country that was under Soviet domination for so long and, you know, was really, yes, and and the Catholic Church really suffered under it. So to a certain Mm -hmm. extent, I think they're really extolling the victory that's taken place in that country. Uh, The victory over communism, the victory over repression. Uh, A victory which is, was in large part due to the Catholic faith of the people. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's the purpose, but I can see it for that reason, that it's going to be a celebration over the victory that they've gotten and they've earned. I mean, ultimately, 
it's it's not for us to say, you know, it's not for me to say they should spend the money this way. You know, this is this is a vocation question. You know, you're you're given these gifts from God and you use them to you know, to his glory however you believe is the best way to do it. And, you know, in their case, they want to praise God with this and, and celebrate it's not the way I would do it, but I don't live in Poland either. That's so. right. Well, and, you know, to a certain extent, I, I, I got to agree with you, by the way, because I, I often wonder, you know, the amount of money that we put into buildings and we put into the finery of robes and, you know, pyramids and things. I, you know, it, it really does, you know, sometimes I wonder. I remember being in one church, it's an LCMS church, very affluent church. And they're walking in, there's a plaque saying, the landscaping was, de- you know, dedicated to the glory of God by. Uh-huh. And I thought, that's interesting. You know, I mean, you know, somebody put all this money for landscaping, but then given the community, if it wasn't professionally landscaped, you know, the people would have, you know, been insulted right. and affronted by the church, too. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I guess I got some piece of this with this um, through Hor- from Horace Hummel when I was at St. Louis. So I used to really wonder about that, but then he always pointed me back to the Old Testament. Look at what God wanted in, to be used in the temple, in, in yeah. the tabernacle, gold and silver and precious jewels and, you know, these things that were seen as being very valuable. And so yeah, that's but, true. Now, that kind of took a lot of the, the the worry about that off my shoulders and said, yeah, okay, if you're really doing it to God's glory, then what else do you do with it? Yeah. So. I suppose. It still rubs me the wrong way, though. <laughs> That's just because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. And by the way, for any of you who may have just took real offense at that, um, I'm just giving them a hard time. That's all. However, okay. maybe they could take little statues and sell them at Walmart. There you go. <laughs> I was going to do that same thing. <laughs> you what? I was going to say that same thing. Oh, so hey. Yeah. Great minds think alike. What can we say? Um... Or something like that. Yeah, now we have these, or small minds, I don't know. Sorry about Uh, this. I know it's a bit silly. Yeah, Walmart is going to be selling, uh, doing a a, 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 a test market of biblical action figures. So instead of going out there and getting Optimus Prime and uh, and the Transformers, or or getting G.I. Joe, or... Uh, uh, Spider-Man or Superman or Batman, you can get Noah or David or Samson. So I'm not quite sure why you would want to get Samson. Does, and does David come with Bathsheba doll? <laughs> Obscure joke. Talk to your parents. And and does and does Noah have his uh, little vineyard there? I have no idea what that meant. I think you're getting off this hook. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you're going to make these biblical action figures, does it come with everything that, you know, the Bible talks about? This is madness. Uh, there's a great line in a um, song. Uh, it's called Christian Bookstore by Jonathan Runman. It says, and I'm trying to remember the exact line, but it's, it goes something like, and I'll, I'll probably paste it in here over my own voice, but... Uh, Something about. Well, I wonder if the kids who buy those Bible action play sets ever stage a cleansing of the temple reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I. Now, no one knows for sure, but I yeah. think it's safe to say if Jesus hadn't risen, he'd be rolling in his grave. Yeah, I can see. Instead okay. of Barbie and Ken, David and Bathsheba. Okay. You know, it always... <laughs> With a little Uriah to kill. <laughs> You're crazy. I, I always find it amusing that whenever they come out with toy lines like this, because, I mean, this, is, this isn't this is a new thing. I mean, you've been able to get these things in Christian bookstores for, you know, ages. 
but it's just that Walmart's going to be stocking them now. But it always amuses me that they ship always one of the ones that's definitely going to be included in their line is Samson. And you look at Samson's life. Okay, if you're going to have the kids reenact part of his life, which part are you going to do? Because there's only really one scene in Samson's life where he does well. And that's the part where his eyes are gouged out, his hair is just starting to grow back, and um, and he's basically committing suicide and taking down a bunch of Philistines with him. But it always ships with a jawbone yeah. <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of with his eyes gouged out. I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, I mean, if you look at Samson's life, I, I, I preached on Samson, matter of fact, uh, for a confirmation sermon one time. And I called it a used-to-be Christian. Yeah, here, here's this guy. God gave him all these great gifts, and he, he just, he, he, he used them on his own appetites. He wasted God's gifts. Uh, you know, he, he never saw a woman. He didn't try to bed down. Uh, you know, so it was just, you know, uh, you know, and just talk about the kids. You know, what's, God is giving you tremendous gifts. What are you going to do with them now? Are you going to wind up, you know, Samson, a used to be Christian? So yeah, I, I always think it's fun, you know, that, 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 the same thing, you know, I was just, once again, I was wondering, did, did Samson come with the Philistine wife? You know, did the little Delilah there, you know, with a with a razor in her hand? You know, I mean. <laughs> well, it's a, it, you, you, you tie him up, and then you push the little Kung Fu grip button, you know, and then he breaks the, the yeah, rope. Okay, that will work too, <laughs> you know, I just. So, um. I... <laughs> And then there's a 12 inch talking kind of Jesus. Innocuous. Yeah, that's a little disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is talking to me. And then, oh, there was a, there was a story a while back about this kid was playing with a little, um, it was a dog, I think. Stuffed dog, this talking dog. And the line that it was saying was, you're so big, but the kid heard it and it sounded kind of like, you're stupid. <laughs> So, which, I mean, it was, it was kind of an amusing story, but, you know, I'm looking at this going, what if they don't use a very good speech synthesizer chip with the, um, with the Jesus doll? <laughs> you can just imagine, Jesus told me, to, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, this, 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 this chief executive of the, of the toy company says, if you're very religious, and it's interesting, by the way, he's saying very religious. I mean, you know, it's, Instead of if you're a committed Christian, I mean, I did just, just some of the, that word there just really just kind of rubs me. But he said, if you're very religious, it's a battle for your children's minds and what they're playing with and pretending. There are remakes out there of Satan and evil things. There is evil there that does not sleep. Spider-Man. Well, you know. Superman. No, 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 no. Spawn. Spawn. There's a new Spawn movie coming out. So you know there's going to be all those demon toys out there. You will face evil, and you will defeat it. At this, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think this is this is kind of a... All right, if, if you want to play... I mean, my kids used to... or They like to play with our nativity set, you know, when we have it out at Christmas time. So I, mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with these toys, but it's a toy. And I really don't see it as some kind of major religious thing. You know, I could, you know, my kids have, uh, my daughter's got a little people version of the uh, a Noah's Ark. And it only has like four different pairs of animals or something like that. My um, kids used to have the same one. The what one? My kids had the same one. Oh, okay. So... You know, they like to play with it and stuff, but then again, a lot of times, um, she'd stick Noah in a toy pickup truck, throw the animals in the back, and, you know, off they go. So. My question is, does she ever have Noah in the, in the ark and have the other people outside of it banging to get in and drowning? <laughs> Let me in. No, no, she didn't do that part. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a, um. Do not hesitate. Mercy. Maybe I'm wrong here, uh, but it, it seems to me this is kind of heading into this idea again of a Christian subculture, that you mm-hmm. can't let your kids 
you know, be outside the Bible. They have to be inside this this little cocoon, and we have to protect them. But I mean, if you're gonna read, really sit down and read the Bible, um, and you look at this honestly, I mean, it is a bloody, body uh, book. Mm-hmm. I mean. If they really film some of these battles, I mean, if you you put a movie with some of these battles the way they were, or and the, and the people, I mean, you know, David one time he fought this guy, fought fought uh, uh, fought a battle and he won, and he made the guys lay down on the ground, face down, and you know he chopped the heads off too and let the third one live. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty brutal stuff. No, well, it's like the story of David and Goliath. We tell that story to the kids, which is violent enough, given that he kills Goliath, Goliath by sinking a rock into his head. But they generally end the story there, and don't read the rest where he cuts off Goliath's head with his own sword. Right. Come and see the violence inherent in the system. Yeah. So, uh, but it's uh, you know I don't know they're they're just I could see my kids liking these toys, and if they really wanted them. You know, I would be willing to get them for them as, you know, Christmas gifts or whatever, if that's what they wanted. But I, I wouldn't push them. I mean, I wouldn't say, oh, hey, you should, what do you, look at this. Isn't, isn't this great? You know, or, or anything like that. I, you know. I, I did have some people in my first church who really pushed this kind of stuff on their kid and just thought it was great. And I remember going over there and he had his own little... Sword of the Spirit armor kit. I, Arthur, was to carry Excalibur. And I just... I just wonder how much that stuff actually teaches. I just thought, that's, that's, that's very nice. I, I like seeing that. I would die before I thought my kid wear that. But that's okay. <laughs> oh, I saw that when I was a kid. And I thought it was pretty cool just because it was a sword and a shield <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I can dress up like a Roman soldier. <laughs> Strange women lying in ponds, distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Let's see, we've been in Afghanistan. Do you think they'd allow courses in prostitution in Afghanistan? Probably not. Probably but not. New Zealand is something else entirely. We're in trouble. This is. Uh, it's I loved your consumer. comment, by the way. I gotta say, I gotta interrupt you. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I loved your comment. I just want to see the final exam. I just. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, I was discussing the story with somebody at church this week, and. Uh, you have an interesting you church. To... <laughs> well, you wanted to know what the homework would be like. <laughs> <laughs> that too. I... Oh, that is nasty. Anyway. What they call, I guess, tertiary courses, which I would think must be primary, secondary, tertiary, be college level. Um, or you know, I, I I looked at this, and I don't know if anybody out there is from like New Zealand or something that has a better understanding, because different countries have different school systems. Um, I looked at this, and it just it kind of sounded like a um, uh, like a vocational school. Okay, it might be school, that too. Something like that. Um, where it's not, you know, you have training. Like in, in in England you have um you have college, which is like what we would call tech school. Um and then there's university is where you're like a four year, you know, or more kind of thing. And I'll tell uh, the so university th- divided into various colleges. Yeah, just to further complicate things. Yeah. But um so, yeah, this sounds kind of like that kind of tech school kind of thing. You go and you just take specific classes on uh, certain, you know, occupations. Right. I mean, yeah. the thing is, once you legalize it, then why not have classes, you know, to teach? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Right, but it's interesting. Because yeah. Just reading this is really funny because it's like, if uh, uh, um, courses in the world's old profession might be considered providers put them forward, they would still have to meet tight criteria. Ah, don't do that! I'm like, 
<laughs> you know, and, you know, you have to be concerned with the quality and relevance of the courses. I'm just like, what is it with you people? What, what brain do you, do you have a brain? I mean, that you would even give somebody with this idea the time of day. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Well, the fact that they legalized it in the first place is pretty disturbing. So, but... Yeah, I, when will this insanity end? I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to teach there. I mean, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm trying to be. Well, I, I can't put a pot. There's no positive spin, but you know, I'm trying to find a sort of lesser to. Is this like a a class on uh, like protection? You know contraceptives and or like money's management how to protect yourself against getting ripped off or i mean i don't know because i mean the alternative is something that you don't need to take a course all you need to do is um turn off your spam filters in your email and you know you'll get plenty of this stuff being sent to you all you got to do is you know turn off your your filters in google and you'll be able to find all kinds of websites that can give you all the information you want on this. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. Um, Disgusting. I, I kind of like this one person. I guess it sounds like the, 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 the educational ministry there is, you know, taking kind of an agnostic attitude. And, you know, she, she says, look, is this going to start, you know, bringing back, you know, Twilight Golf? You know what? What? What is? What is this going to bring back? Um, um, I can see a lot of people signing up for this course, Bill. I can just see it being a. Also, again, you know, they're trying to have some sort of standards here because it says you know would have to show how this you know would meet a community need or government priority. And what would it? Well, of course, we have the DC map, so maybe it does need a government primor- priority. <laughs> uh, it's, but it, you know, it, to a certain extent, it shows what's going on in higher education. That they almost feel as if they can't put any standard out there, and that is just as bad as, as, as you very well know at you know, on American universities. In college, yeah. you know, where, um, you know, they've had, you know, sex workers come and do presentations and, uh, uh, and even porn stars. And, you know, just like, you know, oh, that's that's part of education. That's that's, you know, you can't judge. You can't have a standard. Yeah. Isn't there a verse in Romans that says, thinking they became wise, they became fools? Yeah, there's a few things about that, about uh, God leaving them to their own devices or something to that effect. Or the book of Judges says, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Hey, God, my brilliant! Yeah, and that's just, you know... I think Jed Clampett once said, you got to get an awful education to think of something that stupid. That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. I'm going to marry that man. I could see this going over big in Massachusetts. No. Nevada, I would. Obscure joke. Talk to your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's legal there. Uh, but, uh, no, Massachusetts is the next story. Obscure joke. Talk to your parents. Oh, yeah, indeed. Another transition. Right? Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm getting good tonight. Um, <laughs> oh, very nice, Blaine. And this, I just, I thought this was the weirdest story, because I'm trying to figure out exactly what happened. This um, is scary. This is this but is. Yeah, I had to read scary. it a few times to really wrap my brain around it. <clears throat> so. You have. He's a, a gay Christian who... There's an oxymoron um, for you. <laughs> well, you know, um, people struggle with all kinds of sin. He's not straight, um, but he's not struggling with anything. He's not repentant either. No. So, 
Yeah. So, anyway, he won a discrimination claim against the Church of England after they blocked his appointment on grounds of being a homosexual. So, because they blocked him from being a youth worker in a church, the uh, the, the bishop blocked him. A, he went to an employment tribunal and said, hey, they're discriminating against me um, based on my sexual preference. Now, you know, the reaction ought to have been, well, they're a church, and they teach that it's wrong, so therefore, if you are openly, actively involved in a public sin, then that's kind of the way churches operate. But instead, this employment tribunal said, oh, can't discriminate based on sexual preference. But the goofy thing is, then they can't re- discriminate based on religion either. This guy could be a Buddhist. Correct. Uh, it, it, it's, it's... But, again, England does not have a separation of church and state. And yeah, separate. The Church of England is officially anti-homosexual. Right. So, but... if anything, <laughs> that, should, that should help the church's case instead of um, hinder it. Right, you would think so. I don't know. Hey, I'm not part of this. I, I, I don't know if they have an appeal process here or anything. But you got to wonder about the church, you know, the, the, the whole thing in the first place, because he said, you know, that this bishop who blocked him, you know, uh, talked to him about his previous gay relationship during this meeting after emerging as the outstanding candidate for the job during the interview process. Now, at which point, you know, in the whole interview process, this guy become the outstanding candidate. And nobody looked back and said, what? Hold on a minute. Yeah, we, we can't even begin to talk about you or to you or anything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there there should be certain sort of minimum requirements for the job before you even apply. Right. Or, you know. It should have at the at the application where it had you know listed under spouse it had another man's name that should have sort of sent up the red flags and said well um you know maybe nope, not sorry <laughs> I think we have other candidates that are a bit I, more uh, qualified than that the bishop said you know made it clear that. A person in a committed sexual relationship side of marriage, whether they are heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, transgender, was going to be turned down for the role. Um, Rightly so. So this isn't even discrimination. It's it's not a, a gender preference discrimination. It is a um, a public action. Right. Although, <laughs> what they did. What the homosexual lobby would probably argue, though, is since they do not allow gay marriage, then any relationship in a homosexual is going to be out of marriage. I mean, you, you know, you, you should catch 22. No. Uh, so for him to yeah. sit back and say, well, it's not the relationship per se, it's the, no, it is the relationship. It's the fact that you're acting out on a sinful orientation. Right. You know, just right. as much See, as if... And that's the thing. It's not... If if he had uh, temptation, tendencies, uh, or whatever you want to call it, toward homosexuality, that alone is not going to disqualify him for the position. It's how he chooses to act on it. You know, if I have tendencies toward alcoholism, I need to do something about that. Or rather, more to the point, I need to not do something about that. I need to not act on mm-hmm. that. Or, I mean, it, um, you know, it, you, know, you and I are, are 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 straight, and if we took some of the filters off our computers and off Google and started looking at different sites and different things, mm-hmm. like you were talking about earlier, there's a problem with that too. Oh, um, exactly. You know. Sexual sin is sexual sin. That's what it comes down to. And, you know, we need to be kept from that as much as anybody else does. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of pastors 
mentioning internet porn is, is a perfect example. You know, there's plenty of pastors who are you know, very much inclined toward that. Um, so something needs to be done about it. I mean, they, they need to be stopped. They need to be helped. Not say, well, that's just the way you are, so, you know. Indulge more. Yeah, right, exactly. So, you know, as a church, you need to call sin a sin. But this issue here, this is a religious freedom issue. And it's it's really disturbing. I mean, there's been a lot of really bad things going down in England um, in the realm of uh, the government stepping into the churches when it comes to homosexuality. And there was a case with the, the Catholic Church a while back. There was a whole discussion about uh, adoptions and all that kind of stuff. We talked about that on a previous show. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's, it's getting worse there. And um, I think it is important that we pray for the um, for the Christians in England, for the uh, British society. Um, it's it's just not going a good way. Yep. Hey, man, this don't feel right. My donkey senses are tingling all over. So, you know, as soon as the, st- the state steps in and says, as you're, you know, you know, it's one thing if the guy was applying to be a janitor, all right, or some other or some sort of non-leadership role where he's not going to be, you know, he's, this is a youth leader position. He's going to be teaching children. And, and probably generally when you use the word youth, you're talking uh, sort of um, preteen and teenage kids that are really at a very impressionable age that are um, sort of figuring out who they are, what they believe, and, and all that kind of stuff. And to have somebody who is going to completely contradict the teachings of the church serving in a church position, how is that ever a good thing? Yep. So, I don't know, I think it's time that the Church of England really needs to step up and say, no, hold on a minute here. So hopefully this will be appealed. I'm not sure, like Jim said, what the process is here for this. But this is just, this is ridiculous. Yep. Well, that's kind of everything for this week. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Kind of all over the place this week. Yeah. Um, hope you all have a very good week in, in God's grace this week. And again, always, yep. always, thanks for listening. If you want to contact us, podcast at crossfeednews.com. We'll get your message to us. Yep. Or you can uh, call our voicemail line, 206-350-4749. We, we just we love getting feedback. It's, it's probably the greatest thrill for a podcaster is um, just to get feedback from people and just to, you know, to know that there's somebody out there listening in. And, you know, we've gotten some feedback, and we really appreciate that. Uh, it just makes our day when we get it. And so uh, we'd love to hear from you. And also want to thank our sponsor, PDAPerformance.com, for providing our hosting and bandwidth. You can check out their uh, Formalist software. I just got the uh, um, new beta for their Saguaro not too long ago. And uh, not a whole lot of changes, but that they've, release a little more information and it looks like it's going to be really interesting. So, but thank you everyone for, um, for checking us out and listening, watching and wish you all a very blessed week.